Okay guys, today we're going to be just switching it up just a little bit, and today we're going to be talking about something interesting, I, at least I thought was interesting, and today we're going to be looking at the differences between a survival knife and a bushcrafting knife, and kind of discussing what to look for, or really what both bushcrafting and survival are about, so that you can make the right choices, whether you're wanting to practice survival a little bit more, or practice bushcraft a little bit more. Okay guys, so let's jump into this. So before we can talk about what to look for in a bushcraft or survival blade, we need to look at what bushcraft is and what survival is. Now, the hard thing that a lot of people have when it comes to bushcrafting and survival is understanding the difference. And the primary difference is not the end at which they achieve. The objective of survivalism and bushcrafting is to go out and practice self-reliance in the woods by whatever means you mean that to be. Whether that's building fires, building shelters, collecting natural resources, or you know so on and so forth. There's many different things to do out in the woods that help you build your self-reliance skills. But it is ultimately self-reliance that you're after. So the primary difference between survivalism or survival skills Bushcraft focuses on using multiple tools to achieve an end, such as building shelters, collecting resources, or other self-reliant skills. Whereas survival is primarily about using one tool to achieve those same self-reliant skills. The fire, the shelter, the natural resource collection, all of those. So, when you look at a survival blade versus a bushcrafting blade, as you guys can see, there's naturally bound to be a stark difference, at least in proper survival and proper bushcrafting knives. Now, most knives out there are really more geared toward bushcraft. Things such as the Bark River Knives Aurora, which is currently this knife here, or knives like the Cold Steel SRK are really tools designed to be used in tandem with other tools. Now, as you guys can see, and rolling stuff in, this knife performs very well in tandem with something like a very small Baco Laplander. Now, I'm not trying to argue here which side is better, survivalism or bushcraft. I'm not trying to say that carrying two tools is better or worse than carrying one. In fact, I think it's very important in order for you to be a good woodsman or a good survivalist or bushcrafter, it's important for you to be able to actually be able to be both a survivalist and a bushcrafter, to be a good woodsman. And the reason why is because you don't want to necessarily gain all your understanding and all your learning and all your skill with one tool, such as a knife, but you also want to be able to be well-rounded and you also want to have it's important to be well-rounded and be able to have skillful use and knowledge of multiple tools such as saws, axes, knives, and so on. But it's also important to have a very clear and very good grasp on how to use one tool to affect your survival. So I think it's important to have both a survival blade and a bushcrafting blade and regularly practice both survival skills and bushcraft skills. These are important. However, they are two different things. So let's jump into some of the differences between bushcrafting and survival blades. So now that we've talked about the differences between survival and bushcraft, it's time to talk about survival and bushcraft blades. Now the tracker here is a far example of a survival blade. It's a very purpose-oriented knife. However, I'm not discounting it because there are many survival knives that are in the same league as the tracker. Such knives tend to be other things like the also knives, such as the self-reliance tool made by Dave Canterbury, and other, many other survival knives that kind of have niche uh, features and capabilities that make them more prone to being a do-all knife as opposed to something like this glorified steak knife that the Aurora is. So essentially what you're looking for in a survival knife or what will separate a survival knife from a bushcrafting knife is a few things. One of the biggest and one of the largest killers to a bushcrafting knife is the blade thickness. If you guys see here, this is a hefty quarter inch thick piece of 1095 high carbon steel and it is very thick. The reason why is it has to be very robust and not just that, it also needs to have the proper amount of weight. As you guys could see, 
when chopping with this knife, it would go through pieces of wood in a matter of just a handful of blows. If I tried to replicate similar chopping with this Bark River Knives Aurora, that would have been many more blows and a lot more energy wasted due to the inefficiency of this knife, due to the thickness, really, that it has in its size. So the thickness of this knife is actually critical for its job being a one knife or a one tool option, because once again, if you just have this tool and you don't have a saw to go through wood, you're going to need a knife that can go through wood of its own accord fairly easy. So the thickness is one of the primary things to look for in a good survival knife, which like I said sounds very counterintuitive to a bushcrafting knife, and that's because it is. The other thing you're going to want to look for is the overall ergonomics and blade shape design. They are often tend to be more advanced than a standard bushcrafting knife that as you can see has a very basic blade shape, very standard handle ergonomics. The reason why you're going to want different or better ergonomics, or at least more advanced ergonomics and a more advanced blade shape, is because you're going to need to accomplish more tasks with a singular knife. And as this knife is a really good example of that, you can see that it has the, this kind of double-edged feature that makes this upper portion much better for chopping, and it makes this lower portion much better for being a draw knife, for being a scraper, for being a standard knife to feather stick with, or just do some of the more basic tasks. As you can also see, the handle is more advanced to allow you to have different handholds, so you can choke back for chopping, you can choke up for doing finer tasks, or you can even hold the knife like this, you know, with your second hand being up here, for doing things like draw knife. So, your ergonomics and your blade shape have to be a little bit more advanced, and a little bit different. So the last part of a good survival knife, before we jump into a good bushcrafting knife, is that you're going to want something that is pretty big. And I don't necessarily mean big in width or length, but you're going to want something larger than, say, a bushcrafting knife like this. You can see that this is wider to accommodate for the more advanced blade profile, and it's also longer. This is going to be important because, once again, in order to have a good chopping knife, you don't want something very small like this because you can't build much momentum with the blade. You're also going to want a longer knife because that's going to allow more capabilities such as if you have to, doing things such as uh, batoning your wood, though this can do an okay job, this can baton far larger pieces of wood and help you break down those big pieces of wood into more manageable stuff. So you're going to want a longer and overall larger blade and usually a lot larger and longer handle to accommodate that. Okay, so essentially the key to finding a good bushcrafting knife is essentially taking everything that I just told you and throwing it out the window, or doing the exact opposite to say the least. So when you're looking for a good bushcrafting knife, though it doesn't have to be something like this Bark River Knives Aurora, you're going to want something similar to this Aurora, something that has a very basic and very straightforward edge and blade shape, you're also going to want something that has a very natural and very comfortable handle that's really designed for pretty much one to two positions. Because with a bushcrafting knife, you're not going to be choking back to doing chopping. You're not going to be, you know, choking forward to do some kind of uh, draw knife skills. This is going to be primarily a blade that you're just going to hold like this or like this for a long period of time while making crafts such as notches or... Uh, or netting needles, or something that you're going to be using in your crafts. So having a more basic handle and basic blade shape will allow you to have those types of things. You're also going to want a more narrow blade. Now this one is probably not the best example because it's not particularly more narrow than our survival knife, however it definitely is a little bit as you can see, but the narrower to a degree, the better, because you want something that's going to be very nimble, and once again, when you're placing a larger emphasis on crafting with your knife, you're going to want something that can actually make fine crafts. So having a more nimble and narrow blade profile is going to allow that to happen with better ease. You're also going to want a thinner tip, so you can see that this has a nice tapered tip. Now, in my opinion, the Aurora 
tip is just a little bit too thin, but the basic concept is you don't want something that thick, like the survival knife, because once again, the survival knife has a different objective, and you're likely going to be prying with the tip more on a survival knife than you will with a bushcrafting knife. So those are some of the key differentials between a bushcrafting knife and a survival blade. They are different beasts for different tasks, and I would encourage you to definitely take on survival and bushcraft in their own rights, and not just do one or the other, because you, to be, in order to be well-rounded and to understand how to use any tool in any situation, you have to get out there and practice with them. And you also have to have the right tools for the situation to maximize your odds of successful survival or bushcrafting. So anyways, guys, hopefully this has helped kind of clear things up. And hopefully I've been able to explain some of the basic differences. These are some of the largest differences between bushcrafting and survival blades. However, there are some more minute details.